Hey you guys, welcome back to Alleyways, or if it's your first time here, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications, not only so you know when I'm uploading new content, but also so I can include you in my subscriber shout out. So at the end of the video today, I'm gonna to be shouting out a subscriber. Um, if you subscribe, you could be next. Make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video to see who that is this week, and as always, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to get the most out of your first day on board Disney Cruise Line. I wanted to make this video not only as a distraction during quarantine, something for you guys to watch at home, something for me to make while I'm at home, but also I know a lot of you guys had trips get canceled or delayed. And I know that's like the very least of the problems that we're experiencing now, but also it really does stink. It's sad. I mean, when you're looking forward to vacation with your family, sometimes that's something you work, you know, the whole year towards or more than one year towards. And I know that can be really sad. So I wanted to make this video so we could get excited about making the most when we do get back on board. Let's get started. The first thing that you can do to get the most out of your first day is to complete your online check-in before you arrive at the port. This is gonna save you time once you get there. Less time in the port means more time on board. Also during that online check-in process, I'm gonna encourage you to select the earliest available port arrival time that you can manage. The earlier you arrive at the port, the earlier you get on board, the more time you have on the ship that first day. Now, whether you're new to my channel or to Disney Cruise Line, you may or may not know that once you arrive at the port, a porter is going to take your bags when you arrive, your checked bags, and they're gonna deliver them to your stateroom. So make sure one, that you have cash on hand to tip your porter, and two, that you have everything that you need in a carry-on bag to enjoy your time on board from whenever you get on until usually 3.30 or 4.45, sometime before or after the lifeboat drill, which we'll talk about in a little bit. That's the next time you're gonna see those checked bags. So you really want to make sure that you have everything you need in that carry-on bag to do whatever it is you want to do from the time you get on board until late afternoon. Now I can understand how if you've never been on a Disney cruise you don't really know what you need to prepare for and there are so many activities available. So how are you going to decide what you need in that carry-on bag? Now years of cruising have taught me that I'm the kind of person that likes to get on board go have lunch and then get out by the pool. So I make sure to have my swimsuit, sunscreen, pool shoes, a good book, and my camera to enjoy out by the water. But you may not be like me and my family. Um, and if you don't enjoy getting out by the pool first thing, Trust me when I tell you Disney Cruise Line has so many different options for entertainment or activities during those first few hours on board. Now I know it can be hard if you've never been before to know what's available, so to help you out I'm going to link below an example of a navigator. And if you don't know what a navigator is, it looks like this. And when you first check into Disney Cruise Line and you get your key to the world card and everything else, you're going to be handed a paper navigator. Used to, these would be delivered to your stateroom every night, but in an effort to be more environmentally friendly, Disney has only now made these available for pickup at guest services, or you can get all this same information in the Disney Cruise Line app. The navigator is a wonderful tool to let you know what's going on on board pretty much every minute of the day. So I'm going to hold it up here. You can also go to the link below in the description box. But you can see on this left axis here, they have an Excel spreadsheet that shows you kind of activities by age. So you'll see things, if I can get my camera to focus, you'll see things for adults, you'll see the different names of the kids clubs, you'll see what's happening at Funnel Vision. And across the axis on the top are different times. So if you're an adult, let's say you want to see what's going on around this time. Oh, well, a spa raffle. Maybe you're interested in wanting a treatment. So you'll want to go to the spa at three o'clock. Now, I'm somebody that goes by guest services every day to pick up a paper navigator. I like having them kind of almost as a memento or a souvenir. Um, 
for scrapbooking and things like that. I also do use the Disney Cruise Line app because at the beginning of every day, I like to go through and set which activities that I wanna go to during the day and then the app will give you a reminder 15 minutes before so you don't miss it because it is easy to get caught up in relaxing by the pool or doing whatever you're doing and just losing track of time. But the Navigator is definitely going to be your friend and I would recommend um, looking at the one that I have. It's a sample, it gives you a good idea of what's gonna be going on your first day. That's gonna help you kind of pick what you wanna do or set your plan with your family and pack your carry-on accordingly. Another thing you're gonna get at check-in is the all important key to the world card. And this is gonna have a lot of important information that can help you kind of figure your way out on the first day and also you're gonna need it throughout your entire cruise. The key to the world card functions to get you on board. So every member of your party will need to swipe theirs the very first day to get on the ship and at every port to get off and on the ship again. It's also gonna act like a credit card. So all of your purchases on board can be made with your key to the world card. It is tied to your credit card that you put down for your stateroom. So for people traveling with families, I would definitely recommend letting your child swipe their card to get on board and then maybe taking those from the younger members of your party so you can keep up with them because even with the handy dandy Disney Cruise Line lanyard that you can wear around your neck, it can be tough to keep up with. So they're not only going to help you by scanning to get you on board and off board, acting as a credit card, this also gets you in and out of your stateroom. You'll also need a key to the world card or really any old gift card or credit card to put in a slot in your room to make sure that the lights are turned on. These are really important. Make sure you keep up with them. If you do lose one while you're on board, guest services can either get you another or help you find yours, but please, please, please keep up with this. It's also going to give you a lot of really vital information. On the bottom of your card, you'll see the word dinner and next to it a time. That lets you know if you have either the early seating at six or the later seating at 8.15. It's gonna give you your table number, which you'll need to tell to head servers when you arrive at dinner so they can direct you to your table number. And then at the very bottom, there is going to be a random series of letters. Now this is the first letter of the name of each restaurant and that is gonna let you know what your dining rotation is. So this is something that whenever people that have been on a bunch of Disney Cruise Lines check in, you'll see them grab the key to the world card to see what their dining rotation is. That's like something you can only find out when you check in and people are really excited. So you'll see a lot of Castaway Club members you know, looking at their dining rotation first thing. So that's all the information that's gonna be available to you under the Key to the World card, and those are the uses that you're gonna put the Key to the World card to on your vacation. It's very important, hold on to it, keep it safe, keep it in your lanyard, hold on to the ones for the younger kids. All right guys, I'm sorry, I know this is a lot of information all at once, but I hope it'll just help you, one, to not feel so overwhelmed or confused when you first get there, and two, just to make that first day and the rest of your voyage easier. But hang with me because we're not done yet. All right, so you're checked in, you've given your bags to the porter, you've got your navigator, your key to the world card, your Disney Cruise Line app, you know how to work it all, you're on board and what happens next? All right, my recommendation is that you go ahead and find where you want to have lunch. Now lunch is gonna be offered in two places and you don't wanna miss it because welcome aboard lunch truly is to me, one of the best meals of the entire vacation. I think it's partially the fact that you're finally there, but also the offerings are so wonderful. Now on all of the ships, you're gonna have the option to either do a sit down lunch in one of the main dining rooms, or to enjoy a welcome aboard buffet in cabanas up on the top decks. Now on Dream and Fantasy, you go to Animator's Palette on deck three in the aft, and lunch is offered there from 11.45 to two o'clock. If you want to do the welcome aboard buffet, you go up to cabanas, and that's deck 11 in the aft of the ship, and that's available from 11.45 until three. My Personal preference is to go ahead and do the Welcome Aboard Buffet. I love how many options they have, and I also like having a quicker lunch because I wanna get in, have my wonderful lunch that I look so forward to, and then have a lot more time out by the pool. That's just me. You may wanna get in and have a relaxing sit-down lunch. Lunch and Animator's Palette, I'm sure, is wonderful as well. Now, I told you guys the location of these restaurants, but I understand if you've never been on a ship, it can be kind of confusing to find out where everything is, but not to worry. The navigator that you were handed at check-in 
is a great source to find your way around the ship. On the back side of the navigator, there's gonna be a ship directory. And what this is going to do is gonna tell you key locations for all different kinds of things on board. So they're gonna have youth activity locations, pools, recreation, general information, lunch, dinner, late night snacks, added features, and entertainment. They're gonna tell you guys the name of whatever it is you're looking for, the deck, and also the location within the deck and then operating hours. So the navigator really is a great tool to help find your way around. All this information is also available on the Disney Cruise Line app. And if you don't have the app or a navigator on hand, make sure to find a cast member and they're more than happy to help you. Another way that you can get good directions in a pinch is in the elevator. So in all the elevators on board Disney Cruise Line, there are going to be uh, not directions, but there is going to be a directory that's going to tell you kind of some of those key locations from the navigator as well. One last note on directions, if you are on board and interested, beginning at 1.45, your first day on board, there is going to be a walking tour of the ship where a cast member is gonna take you around, show you where everything is, and kind of help you get your bearings that first day. Once you've eaten lunch and kind of figured your way around, you're free to enjoy the ship and any activities that you so choose until around 3.45 on the first day of your cruise. At 3.45, there is going to be a mandatory lifeboat drill. And when I say mandatory, I mean mandatory. Every single person on board the ship has to take place in the lifeboat drill. Now, you don't need to go to your room to get your life vest. All you need is your handy dandy, key to the world card. Now, not every member of your party needs a key to the world card. You just need one key to the world card per stateroom that you have reserved during your voyage. So my family usually has two staterooms, so we need at least one key from each room to swipe. Once you have a cast member swipe your card, they're also going to take attendance and make sure that every member within that stateroom is present for the lifeboat drill. Now, the lifeboat drill on board Disney Cruise Line really is quick and totally painless. It lasts from 345 until, actually let's check because I do have my navigator here. So it lasts from 345 until 430. Now, during that time, you're gonna be at your assigned muster station, the one that we talked about, you'll have on your key to the world card. Attendance will be taken. You're gonna be instructions for what you need to do in case of an emergency. And then after that, everyone is released and it is time for one of the best events of the entire vacation, the sail away party. Now, after the lifeboat drill, it does get kind of hectic with everybody, you know, being released from the lower decks and trying to go all the way up to the pool deck at the same time. Just be patient, move up the stairs at the pace that you can. Don't miss the sail away party, it's so much fun. It lasts from 4.30 to 5.15. My family and I usually love to go by the sail away party for a few minutes, get that just initial boost of excitement and energy. Then we like to move to the forward of the ship and look out over the water. It's a, a really nice and peaceful way to do the sail away. A lot of times you can see dolphins and just take in the breeze and it's such a wonderful and peaceful way to start your vacation, especially after the like initial kind of excitement and uh, craziness that is the sail away party. After the sail away party, there's lots of fun activities planned. You either can do some of those activities. Some people may, you know, get ready for dinner. Some people may get ready for a wonderful show before dinner. It just kind of depends on what your seating is. But after that sail away party, you know, you're really off to the races. It's time to enjoy your cruise vacation. I definitely would recommend going to whatever the show is that night. I just think that having dinner and a show is such a wonderful way to start your vacation. And those are my tips for how to get the most out of your first day. I hope that all of this information was helpful. Like I said, I know it was a lot, but it's taken a lot of us years of cruising and just kind of learning by trial and error to get a lot of this information. So I hope it's helpful to new cruisers. I hope that maybe it's 
you know, helpful to some seasoned cruisers. If you guys have a great tip for how to get the most out of your first day on board, drop it in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. You all mean so, so much to me. And I wanted to shout out a special subscriber, Jennifer Fredette. You're so sweet and wonderful and I've so enjoyed connecting with you on here and on Instagram and on Facebook as well. Um, I know that you and your family are seasoned Disney travelers and I always love that you participate and you're positive and happy and you really do have just a lot of really great advice to share. You've done a lot of longer sailings and that's something that I'm really looking forward to doing and you've always been so helpful uh, to me when I've had questions about some of the longer sailings and I just appreciate your participation and support and help and friendship so much so thank you for being a part of alleyways with us thank you guys all i love you so much and i'll see you next time bye